So what's going on with comics, Adam? You know, comics are... Well, they're in the name of our store, so I think we should definitely uh, have some insights there. Uh, comics are a fun thing because, oddly enough, one of the things that you look at that determines, oh, what's going on in comics isn't even the comics themselves, but what's going on in the broader world. I think we've reached a point where the awareness of these comic book properties, these comic book series, these comic book characters has so severely transcended the actual medium of comics that if anything, they exist in the ether, in movies, in television, and that is almost what ends up dictating interest mm -hmm. as opposed to the other way around. It's yeah. not like a new comic came out, so I want to go see that movie. It's there's something new coming out in you know, the movies, maybe we'll call it Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. uh, and people, I think, take a lot of interest and start uh, looking there on two levels, really. Looking in terms of, uh, I want new stuff featuring this character because we're more interested in this now yep. and have an awareness that we might not have before. And people saying, oh, I want the old books. I want the first appearance of that character because now that everyone cares about them, there's going to be more demand for someone who otherwise to the general public might have not even been on the radar. True. And, and, and what Adam's saying is not to say that, well, the new stories doesn't matter anymore, oh. right? Because every, every year, pretty much uh, by the summertime, you'll see the revamp of something. You know, the, the, the first issue of a particular character, um, the first appearance of some other characters, and many of these eventually influences future television or movies, mm -hmm. right? We could, we could talk about Miss um, Marvel. We could talk about Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. We could talk about Scotland Lane Ant-Man. We could talk about a whole vast of the first appearances, the major events such as Civil War and movies that influenced the movies and the TV shows. But now though, by how it impacts the collecting world, oftentimes it's switched around when these movies, these characters are on the either the big screen or the smaller screen. Absolutely. And you could see that in various different degrees, like even on a small scale, just when people come into the store, mm -hmm. peak characters who they're asking about. One character who I have started suddenly just this year had people asking about, you know, people come in, you know, several times a week, several times a day saying, oh, do you have this character? Do you have this character? Do you have this character? Moon Knight. Yes. Before this year, I don't know if anyone ever even came into the store to buy a Moon Knight comic, other than me. Well, there could be people who enjoy it, oh, but that's... we just don't. <laughs> that's no. very true. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where you can see on that kind of a platform, once awareness starts turning in a particular direction, it takes off. It's just, it's night and day. It's almost like uh, once you have a character in a prime slot, a switch is flipped. True. I mean, you see the same thing happen with Loki. Mm -hmm. You see the same thing ha happen with Scarlet Witch. Now, just like taking a quick step back, you know, during COVID, there weren't any comics being published, right? So people are, what they could look at is pretty much a lot of the TV series, movies, things that they could focus on. And as a result, some of the older first appearance comics have gone up in value and there's a great demand for it from a market standpoint, <laughs> right? Uh, and that's where you see all the fluctuation, the impact in terms of the market value. Everybody started looking for Loki number one and you s the first appearance of Loki actually is in Journey into Mystery. And then you have the first appearance of Scarlet Witch. So those characters that have major impact, their books slowly and steadily rise in value because of the greater demand. And then with Doctor Strange, taking a more prominent role across a lot of the movies, et cetera, his first appearance moved a little bit more front and center in terms of what people are collecting. Now, that's not to take away from Iron Man, first appearance of Iron Man, that's not to take away the first appearance of Silver Age Captain America. Mm -hmm. There's still value there, but the interest is not the same. And as a result, the value soften a little bit. It's still great books, it's still key books, it's still something that everybody's looking for, but if you compare that to the demand for Doctor Strange, for Spider-Man, uh, such as Amazing Fantasy, then that kind of changes in terms of the Silver Age, Golden Age, if we hit, hit that level in terms of comic books, in terms of value. Um, but the more recent one we talked about is Miss Marvel, as well as some of the other uh, characters. And it impacts some comics. 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, I think that one of the fun things about that yep. is that it's almost like a, not, not a rotation, but you might have characters who uh, kind of fall out of favor or fall out of interest, suddenly kind of take front and center and become more prominent again. Mm -hmm. I think that that uh, energizes things on two levels, that people look at the new and they also look at the old, people going forward and backward. And that's, uh, I think that's really exciting uh, to see people kind of take an interest in all directions, mm -hmm. because one of the good things about comics is that you have history, like yep. you were getting at. So as a result, you can walk in and say, oh, I'm going to collect this new series starting from number one yep. that they just did as part of the tie-in to the new show. Or you could say, as you're alluding to, I'm going to go all the way back to issue one. Yeah, and another point is that when there's greater popularity, there are more people coming in because of the movies they, they see and all that and so forth. Then you have people who are interested in certain covers. Mm -hmm. I like Spider-Gwen. Right? Therefore, I want different variant covers, and maybe this one I like. And now, from a collectability standpoint, then people just wanted to focus on the cover that they, they like uh, versus just the first appearance. Um, and we have first reveal of Jane Foster in Thor, uh, which many of you will be seeing in the movie. Uh, Thor, what is it? Is it Love and Thunder or Thunder and Love? Uh, I hope it's Love and Thunder. Okay, cool. If it's not, uh, we'll have to cut this out. Exactly. But the other part of it is the value of the book and the demand of the book would also de depend on how the movie does and how her character is received. Absolutely. So all these factors are impacting the demand and the collectability and people coming in for comics, at least in our shop.